So today we will build a nice classic synth pad sound with some of the surge modules and this video will be very much beginner friendly so I will not do anything too complex and I will do my best to try and explain step by step what's going on and why. I will just mention that I have various courses available if you want to dig deeper or if you feel like you need a bit more help. Links in the description of course. All of the modules I will be using today are available for free so all of you can follow along and I will use color coding so it might be easier to follow the connections. So we will start with adding an oscillator that will be our main sound source and for this I will use the classic VCO. Now a VCO is a voltage controlled oscillator so it will generate oscillations, it will generate waveforms and you can also control different aspects of these waves with control voltage. Now if I connect the VCO to the output, we will already get sound. Right, and now I can change the shape of the waveforms and by that change the sound, the timbre. Right, I can also add a sub oscillator that will play an octave below. Right. I can add unison, so multiple waves will play together. I will add three. Right, and now we can detune them from one another. Now again, the oscillator will always output the waveform, it will always output voltage, but I want a way to control the amplitude of this voltage, to control its level, and later on also add more sound sources. So for this, we can use the surge mixer. And now I will connect the VCO to the first channel of the mixer, left and right, and this will go also to the output. And I can control the level of this channel. Right, and I can control the overall mix. Now we can use control voltage to control the amplitude for us, and there are many ways we can do this, but I will use the envelope generator from Surge, of course. Now this is a deep module, but we will concentrate only on the envelope section for now. Now an envelope is also voltage, and it's voltage we can use to control parameters over time with various stages. Now let me show you what I mean by that. First of all, we will need a way to tell the envelope when to start working, and for this it's common to use a gate signal. Now I will use my MIDI keyboard, the key step that you can see here. But if you are using VCV as a VST, you can use your DAW and you can also use a sequencer to sequence this voice. So for this, in my case, I will need the MIDI to CV module, which will look like this. And I can choose here my Arturia key step. Right, and now we have the gate output that we can use to gate the envelope. In this case, gates will be blue and this will go to the gate envelope input. Let's have a look at this also on the scope, right? So this will be the envelope generator output. It will be a modulation, a green cable. And I want to show you also the gates. So this will again be the blue cable or the blue trace on the scope, right? So now as long as I hold the key on the keyboard, the gate signal will go up and gates are also voltage that will look like a pulse or a square wave, right? So I will hold the key. You can see the blue trace is high and you can also see the envelope, right? This is the green trace. And again, the envelope is also voltage. In this case, it has different stages. Now here with this envelope generator, we have six different stages, but we will concentrate only on four of them, right? So the attack time, so how long it will take the envelope to go from zero to maximum. Then we have the sustain level. So at which level the envelope, this voltage will sustain as long as I hold a key. Then we have the decay time. So how long it will take the envelope to go from maximum to the sustain level and release. So how long it will take the envelope to go back to zero after I let go of the key. So again, attack, 
decay. Now it will sustain. You can see the blue trace stays high. This is our gate. As long as the gate stays high, as long as I hold the key, right, the envelope will stay in the sustain stage. And now when I will let go, it will go into the release stage. So it will go back to zero. Now, again, we can use this voltage to control the amplitude of the VCO via the mixer. So if I get rid of the scope for now, I can use this envelope generator output, send it to the modulation input on the mixer, and now I can assign this modulation to the gain control, which is basically the overall level. I click the button once, I choose my range, right, and now this envelope will control the amplitude according to the settings we have right so again attack decay right sustain and release now, as I mentioned before, a VCO is a voltage controlled oscillator, so we can control various parameters of the VCO with voltage. For example, we can control its frequency, which means that we can control its pitch, the actual note it will play, and for this we can use the volt per octave input. Right, and pitch is also voltage, so if I use the pitch output, this will be a yellow cable, this will go to the classic VCO. Now I can play also the oscillator, I can play also notes. So now let's add another building block that will control the color, the timbre of this voice, and we will do this with a filter, of course also from Surge. Right, I will connect from the mixer, this will go to the filter, and then back with the red cable. To the output. Now the filter will basically attenuate frequencies, it will attenuate overtones, it will attenuate harmonics, and by that change the color of the sound. So now it's set to a low pass filter, which will let the frequencies below the frequency control, below this cut off point to pass, and it will sound like this. <laughs> And there are various uh, different filter types that you can choose from and experiment with, but for now we will stay with the low pass. There are a few more controls that will change the sound. One of them is the resonance they will, that will add a bump at the cutoff point, right? Again, this is the cutoff point. And if we change this point, the resonance will follow, right? So it will create basically a bump at this point and it will sound like this. Without. And again with. And we have also, we have also drive, which will change the gain before the filter, which can also add quite a lot of character. I can change the gain also after the filter just to make sure it's not too loud. So until now we could play only one voice, one note at a time, but I want to be able to play chords as well. So we have to set this up in the right click menu of the MIDI module. We can turn this little patch into a polyphonic patch, so we can play a few notes at a time. Again, in the right click, we can choose how many uh, channels of polyphony. I will go with, let's say, five channels. Right, and now I can play up to five notes at once. Right, and we can play chords, and we have... polyphony. Okay, so now let's start adding some movement and we will start with the filter. We will add movement to the filter with another envelope, right? So I will add another envelope generator. I would like the envelope to control this frequency, 
control, right? You control the uh, cutoff point, right? So I will send again the envelope generator output to one of the modulation inputs, and I will assign this modulation and set the range. Let's go with something like this for now. And again, I will need to gate this envelope. So if I hold control and I take another copy, I can just take another copy of the gates and connect it to the second envelope. So now this second envelope, we control the cutoff control, the cutoff point of this filter. Right? And also here I would like to change it a bit, so maybe a bit more attack. Right? And maybe we can change the sustain levels here on both. Maybe here it can be all the way up and then here a bit lower. Right, maybe a bit less resonance. Right, something like this. So now we have some movement for the filter and let's add more texture and variation with another VCO, right? We can mix in another oscillator and in this case I will use the modern VCO, right? I will send it to the second input of the oscillator and again I will use the pitch information. So again I hold control and I take another copy of the cable. Now I can also solo this. So let's have a listen. This will be now just the modern VCO. Right, I can change the mix of the waves, add some pulse, add a triangle. Right, again also here I can add unison. Right, so now both of them together. Maybe add some more attack on the envelope for the filter. And we can add even more texture by mixing in noise, actual noise um, source. Right here we have noise, a noise source on the mixer itself. Again, if I solo this, right, it will sound like this. Right, so we can add a bit with the oscillators. Right, something like this. And now it's a good time to add some movement to everything. And I will do this with the quad LFO module. Of course, also from Surge. Now LFOs are also oscillators, but they are referred to as low frequency oscillators. So they will also generate oscillations, they will generate waveforms. But in the case of LFOs, the frequency, the rate of oscillations can go down quite low and they can be used as a modulation source to add movement and variation. So now we can use them to add motion to the VCOs, for example. So let's start with the width of the modern VCO, right? With this control. Right, so I'm going to take the first LFO. Uh, modulation again is green. This will go to the modulation input on the modern VCO. And again, I will assign this modulation and set the range for the width control, right? You can see it already, there is movement. And I will take the rate, the frequency of this LFO a bit down so it's nice and slow. Right, so we get this movement. Right, something like this. We can also modulate the shape of the classic VCO. This control here. Right, again with another LFO. So again, we'll take the second LFO to the modulation input and assign this modulation. And again, change the rate. It will be different from the first one, but still quite slow.
Right, and we can add even more movement to the filter with another LFO, right? So I will take the third LFO. This will go to the modulation input on the filter. Again, assign this and set the range, right? Maybe something like this. Right, just a bit, and again, take it down in frequency. Maybe even change it to be a triangle wave. Right, and now we will use the fourth LFO to add movement to the pitch of the oscillators, but just a tiny bit, just to add again a bit more of a motion to everything. So I will set, take the LFO and send it to both modulation inputs on both oscillators. Right, and now if I use this a bit too much, right, this is not what we want, so just a tiny bit. this on this oscillator and another one. If I hold control and shift, I can make this uh, modulation even lower with really, really fine tuning. So maybe something like this, right? I will do the same also on the second oscillator, just so it's not too much. Right, really take it down, something like this. Maybe even lower, you know what? This is a bit too much. And again, take the rate. All the way down. So now we have even more movement. Now we can take this a step further and have each LFO modulate each note individually with its own frequency. And this we can do by turning the LFOs to be polyphonic. Right, so first of all, in the right click menu of the quad LFO, I can change the polyphony also to five, let's say, right, because I have everything else set to five. And I will use also the pitch information, in this case with the green cable, I will use the pitch information to control the rate, right? So now each note will have also a different rate and they are also polyphonic, so each voice will get also its own LFO and it will sound something like this. <laughs> Now let's do something like this. Let's have the envelope of the filter actually output an LFO in the shape of the envelope. So this envelope generator, as I mentioned before, is an LFO times envelope generator, which means that if I choose here now an LFO shape, you can see that this LFO takes the shape right, of the envelope that we had from before. Now I will take the output instead of from the envelope generator, it will be from the LFO envelope generator, and now we will get this LFO, but in the shape of the envelope. So it will come in a bit later, right, it will decay a bit, it will sustain, and it will have also a release. Right, and I can change the rate. Right, so now we have, maybe we'll take the sustain a bit down, so now we have an LFO, but it's in the shape, in the shape of the envelope. So now we will have another envelope controlling the rate of this LFO. This is what I want to achieve. I want it to start quickly and then slowly decay down. So it will sound uh, like something like this. Right, I want to have this effect. So for this I will use another 
envelope generator again I will use the same gate and this envelope generator will go to the modulation input and will control the rate so first of all I will choose the lowest point so where I want I would like it to end <laughs> Right, maybe somewhere here and now the modulation I can set to the highest point right and change the envelope shape right so maybe just a bit tiny bit of attack and more decay right and again change the range here something like this so with the chord it will sound like this right maybe a bit slower right right this is the effect I want and now all what we need is a nice reverb and I will use plateau from valley and I will send the signal to plateau I will take the gain a bit down because it's polyphonic and it can get quite high right and now this will go to the output let's see that it's not clipping or it's too low right and add a nice amount of reverb and now it will sound like this Right, and that was it. Um, of course, you can tweak and change all sorts of things here. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, if you feel like you want to dig deeper, have a look in the description to the uh, link for the various courses. Thanks again for watching. Cheers.